Hello, my name is Peter, and for my final project, I will be doing it on the Euler-Lagrange equations. So before we begin, I would like to first talk about the core concept from which it was derived from, which that being the principle of least action, otherwise known as the stationary action principle. So what is action, you may ask? So action is a difference between the sum of kinetic energy and potential energy, and then like what the principle of least action says for like any stationary points like one and two the the pathing may change a lot but then the laws of physics will also fo always follow the most effective one so action is the least possible value of all the possible pathings and then the more your potential energy in the system over kinetic energy then the closer it is to like the efficient path so now that we know that i want to talk about lagrangians and its uses so a lagrangian is a quantity that characterizes a state of a physical system. It's also used to solve for like equations of motions for systems, more complicated systems to be honest, and also utilizes Newtonian mechanics. Um, here are the two relevant equations, that being the, Lagra the Lagrangian equation, which is the Lagrangian is equal to kinetic energy minus potential energy, T being kinetic. And then we also use the Euler-Lagrange differential equation right there, which will be derived next time. As for applications, um, we could use Lagrange mechanics to calculate anything that Newtonian mechanics could calculate, but in higher dimensions. It's also used in robotic limb mechanics because you can model a muscle arm, which is a series of strings and dampers. And also, each of the arm pieces and the linkage, they're kind of like a pendulum as is, so we could try to predict the path. It's also used in chaotic systems such as the pendulums that I have to the right, which is also what I will be solving later. And, and yeah, it's also used for structural modeling such as ventilation systems, which are spring systems. And then you have to make AC units not so loud, so you must apply damping strings to them so they don't make as much noise. So yeah, moving on. Now first off, before we start, I want to talk about the quick steps of solving Euler-Lagrange problems. So first, what we want to do is determine the degrees of freedoms, being the x, y, and z directions, and also their rotations. So that's roughly around 6. And then we want to pick our coordinates. This could be like Cartesian or polar. It's basically whatever is convenient to predict the path. And then we want to verify that our system is complete, independent, and holonomic, meaning that it's like conservative and isolated. And then now we want to compute the Lagrangian by the main equation of the Lagrangian, which is kinetic energy minus potential energy. And we will want to then solve and plug it into the Euler-Lagrange equation and repeat the steps. So let's move on to my example, solving equation of motion for a double pendulum. As we can see, I put down all my relevant equations. Um, that being the Euler-Lagrange equations and also the main Lagrange equation which is like the total kinetic energy and minus the total potential energy. And if we look to my drawing on the right, we can see that I set the coordinates to be about the entire system. So the y values will be negative. So first off, what we want to do is get the coordinates. You see that for the first pendulum mass, I put its coordinates as x1 equals L1 sine theta 1 and y1 equals negative L cosine theta 1. This is for like the positioning of the first pendulum bob. But then the second one depends on the first. So basically it's the same same kind of format except for we also have to add in the changes in the first coordinates. So yeah, they are constrained to each other. And now we want to derive to find the velocity equation. So this this will come in handy later, but Basically, we want to take the derivative of each of our coordinates. Uh, one notation we use is the dot notation, which is why there's like x dot and y dots. So as you can see here, I took the derivative of each of the coordinates. And now for our next step, what we want to do is find the potential energy and kinetic energy. As we can see here, I went ahead and then wrote down all the kinetic and potential energies. And then I solve for them, we know that potential energy being mass times gravity times the y, and then we just plug in our values that we got from earlier. As for kinetic energy, we are able to plug in our previous coordinates that we solved for and then simplify to get 
it in a more specific form. So now that we have that, we could combine them in our Lagrangian and then get our, our Lagrangian equation. And then it's going to be this really this complicated equation, but then it will all be good for later. So once we have the Lagrangian, we want to take the respective partial derivatives for angles so that we may find like the pieces to the Euler Lagrange equation. As you can see here, I took the DDT of partial L of partial D theta. And then it gets me that equation, the second one. And then I also took the partial partial L of partial theta one to get another equation that's like used for the differential. So once we put them together, we would get one of our first equations of motions for, for the first angle, theta. And then we perform the same task for the second angle. We, we collect the parts. And then afterwards, we also combine them into the differential equation to receive our second equation of motion. So once we have both of them, we could graph them. And then as we can see by my graphs, that the first angle is like determined. We kind of predict the path that it might take. And so does the second angle. And so we can see like the first theta is more controlled while the second one is like a bit more unpredictable. So yeah, that's it for my, my project. Uh, here are my references and thanks for listening.